Wonderful. Well, again, thank you very much. I'll take advantage of that and just pop right in here and say, you know, I spent a good portion of my day taking care of, um, of pet rabbits. I think they can make amazing and wonderful, very intelligent pets, but they do require more attention than I think a lot of people give them credit for. And so while they can be a wonderful pet, they are not a pet that somebody should get impulsively or should get for somebody who isn't expecting it. Um, you know, good rule of thumb with any pet is to make sure that the person wants that animal and has a place in their home for it. Uh, there's some wonderful resources out there in regards to um, good care for pet rabbits. The House Rabbit Society does some really great stuff. And there are wonderful, um, there are wonderful rabbit rescues in both the Spokane area and I know quite a few in the Seattle area as well who could help somebody decide if a pet is right for them and potentially help um, potentially help find a pet that needed adoption as opposed to the impulse bunny buy that we tend to see unfortunately and um, seeing some of the fallout from that every year our local shelter does get inundated with rabbits that are no longer wanted and those can be difficult to find homes for but honestly the ones that end up in the shelter are lucky the more concerning are some folks who think that the rabbits, if they don't want them anymore, can just get turned loose. And that inevitably has one of two very sad consequences. Either the pet rabbit dies because they're not really well adapted to be out in the wild, or sometimes even more detrimentally, they'll survive and then we'll get feral rabbit colonies that can have quite a hard time on the local wildlife populations uh, because they are, um, they are a little bit more destructive. Uh, just they, they have different living habits because they're not, they are not very closely related to our native rabbits here at all. They're more closely related to the European hares. Um, and so they, they dig burrows, they can graze things pretty heavily. And then as our WDFW friends are gonna talk about here shortly, they, are, they can carry that rabbit hemorrhagic disease, which is, uh, which is an ongoing or is an evolving problem. So again, I would recommend that parents not get rabbits for their kids on the spur of the moment, but make sure that it's a well thought out decision and that everybody in the household is committed to them. So Marcy, you are saying that there is a spike in purchases of pet rabbits during this holiday in particular, or is it all holidays? Or talk, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so there does tend to be a little bit of a spike around the Easter holidays because of the, the rabbit and chick um, imagery that comes with Easter. Um, and again, you know, rabbits can be wonderful pets, but we see the spike because a lot of people think that they're cute. They think they'd be a great addition to, um, to an Easter basket. And the truth is, again, if you're not ready for a rabbit, um, they are a pet that requires quite a bit of commitment. Um, and so seeing these little bits of spikes, and then we see an increase in people relinquishing or otherwise um, trying to rehome or get rid of rabbits post Easter, once they realize that these rabbits, you know, they're, they're not cute little stuffed animals. They, they, need, they need care and attention and, um, and a pretty nice setup. So. Thank you. Is there anything anyone wants to add to what Marcy just shared or switch topics? Uh, yeah, I can speak. Uh, again, I would uh, agree the, the idea of uh, pet rabbits being released into the wild is, is a pretty bad decision on a variety of fronts. Um, if you imagine that these rabbits are, are being bred in you know, potentially farms all over the country, and then they're being brought to Washington as pets and then released into the wild, they have a very good chance of bringing uh, the, you know, the rabbit hemorrhagic fever could hitch a ride. And then they're released and then there's interaction with our, uh, our wild rabbit populations. And in central Washington, it would be the biggest concern that we have uh, the federally endangered Columbia Basin pygmy rabbit um, and we have whitetail and blacktail jackrabbit populations that uh, are of concern. And so introducing uh, rabbit hemorrhagic fever to these populations would be devastating. Uh, in addition to our more common uh, mountain cottontail, uh, even a, a big die-off in that population could send uh, a ripple effect through the food uh, web. They're an important, uh, important part of that. And so yeah, ecologically, there, there's never a good outcome to releasing, uh, releasing domestic or feral animals into the wild. From your perspective, from the fish and wildlife perspective, do you see a lot of domestic uh, released rabbits after a holiday like Easter or in the months after? Uh, we don't run into too many too many far out in the wild. Um, we, we do get a lot more calls in and around uh, town, kind of that wild urban uh, interface where people will have released their animals and they'll either call that they are missing, likely they met a predator, or 
um, you know, they start getting established in parks and, you know, then they, then they start becoming a problem if they really get established in some of those kind of um, urban parks or uh, areas. And, and then again, you know, that starts attracting predators around people's houses and stuff. And so it just, um, we usually see the aftermath months and months or years later of pets being dumped in areas. Kind of a domino effect. Yes. Katie, is there anything you want to add? I think the only thing I would highlight is just the importance, as John mentioned, of um, being careful and, and not releasing this, these domestic animals because of potential disease risks. And what we know of RHDV or the rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus um, is that it, it can cause significant mortality. Until recently, we hadn't really seen it in wild lagomorphs in North America, but in the past couple of years, uh, or sorry, the past year, there has been an outbreak in the Southwest, and, and most recently, some rabbits or jackrabbits in Boise, Idaho were found with this virus. Um, and the mortality can be 70 to 90 percent, so quite significant, and especially for our federally endangered Columbia Basin pygmy rabbit and some of our other uh, populations of lagomorphs, which are just you know, struggling at this time. Jason, is how do you think we did? Is there anything else that you would like to cover? Um, I think we did very well. I mean, I don't. Most folks would never release a domestic rabbit, but still, many bunnies are released or escape, and so particularly this time of year, you know, we got to remember release bunnies aren't free. They're going to be food most likely. If they do survive, they may really thrive, establishing feral populations. And, uh, and then there's this new rabbit hemorrhagic disease. And so for all these reasons and more, we're just asking folks never to release domestic rabbits in the wild. Great. Any final words from John or Katie? Um, yeah, the only the other thing I would be asked is the public just to be kind of vigilant. Um, we, the first responders in this kind of situation, will be kind of the public noticing, um, you know, any feral populations dying off or pet rabbits dying. Um, and if they're able to report it, then that gives you know, wildlife professionals like us the heads up that it, it is common and we can kind of take uh, preventative action. So. Um, yeah, mostly just ask the public to be uh, vigilant and report any uh, rabbit die-offs that they're observing. Great. Well, thank you all so much for your time. I really appreciate it. This was great.